Do you want more great content from me? Check out the description box down below. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today I'm just going to quickly go through a few different tips um, that might help you increase your sales or beat the slow times and the slow periods you may be having on eBay. So I'm not going to ramble too much about each of these points, but I will quickly sort of break them down and tell you what they are. And then obviously you can go away, you can research it into them further and maybe make some choices, make some decisions on whether you want to implement these uh, tips or these tricks um, within your business and to actually help generate some more sales on eBay. So number one is reprice your inventory. I don't necessarily mean, you know, straight away I wanted to um, illustrate, but I don't necessarily mean just, um, you know, pricing them down by 5, 10, 20%. I actually could, could mean in certain circumstances that you increase your prices as well. I've heard a lot of people talk about the fact that they've increased their, certain, well, not necessarily their entire inventory, but certain items by 5%. And over the coming days, they've, had, they've actually had sales, maybe in direct correlation with doing that. I don't quite know how you'd figure out if it was a direct correlation of doing that, of increasing the price. However, it's a good guess that it is a result of increasing the price. Uh, some people's theories are that maybe the watchers of the items are panic buying the items because they've seen the price increase and they think they may think in future you would do another price increase. So they don't want to end up paying more down the road and they end up buying it now from, uh, you know, increasing it the first time. So that is a theory, but don't just, you know, when I say we price your inventory, don't just think, I mean, you know, tank the prices of everything, you know, just drop the prices by 20%. I'm not meaning that. I'm meaning play around with it a little bit, maybe increase certain items, maybe do that on more obscure items, so like collectibles, antiques, vintage toys, stuff like that, that there isn't as much competition for. If you're increasing your prices of, you know, very general, generalist items, board games and stuff like that, you're probably not going to get any um, extra sales from doing that. However, if you've got something that you're the only one on eBay or there's only a handful on eBay, then increasing your prices isn't so much of an issue and it might actually generate a sale. So that's number one. Number two is have a sale. So, you know, just a temporary sale, one week, two weeks, whatever you want, five days, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, I generally go for 10%. That's worked really, really well for me in the past. Um, I had a really good sale in January. I got some things out the door. I did a, a sale in February as well because uh, I thought what I might do is start doing sales uh, monthly. But actually, um, I've moved over to something I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, it's actually my next point on the list. But um, yeah, it, it's worked really well for me. So have a sale. Again, this would mean actually reducing your prices, not increasing your prices. But it is only for a temporary time. So, you know, you could do maybe a 10%. As I say, that works really well for me. And that might generate a few sales through the door. But the point to mention with sales is, though, they do generate sales for a short period of time. A sale will generate sales for a short period of time. But um, then after the sales ended, it can kind of just return to normal. So it's not necessarily like a permanent fix or anything like that. But certain, certainly it's something you can use uh, for you know a temporary situation. So number three is use eBay promoted listings. Now I have to say I don't like the principle of eBay promoted listings, right? I feel that we pay for a shop subscription on eBay and I feel that we pay eBay's fees and included in that should be the SEO, which is search engine optimization, you know, and the promotion of our listings naturally. So I don't particularly like the fact that I'm now, you know, I am on promoted listings. I tried it out and it worked great. However, you would expect it to work great because you're paying eBay an extra fee on your sale price to en end up getting the sale. So it didn't work great. I, I wouldn't like it. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be all over that really because it should work great. You are paying an extra percentage on the sale. But I don't particularly like it because I feel that that should, in one respect, be included in, in the price of eBay fees and such. However, that's not what happens. You know, nowadays it's, you know, you use promoted listings if you would like to. 
and that in turn boosts your sales. There's a lot of theories going around whether eBay is throttling your sales in order to get you to use promoted listings and pay them that extra fee. I have opinions on that. I kind of think there is some some level of truth in that. Whether you do or not, that's obviously your opinion and you can put that down below as well. And I'm quite happy to uh, sort of discuss other people's opinions on that. But I am using promoted listings despite my reservations with it, which you might think that's a little bit kind of hypocritical. But the fact was my sales were really slow. There's nothing that I could have done about it. I just ended up having to give in and I feel very powerless as a small business doing that. And that's, you know, that's the kind of thing you have to do when you're on eBay. It's kind of their platform, their rules. So, you know, if you don't want that or if I don't want that, I end up having to move uh, on to more more platforms or more arenas that I control more. So, um, yeah. Use promoted listings, obviously you pay a fee as a percent, expressed as a percentage of the sale that you control yourself. So there is an element of control in it and um, you, they then promote your listings and when you get cl you know, a click and then a sale or you know, a click through to a sale, then you pay, as I say, that percentage that you've set um, as an extra fee on the sale. Works great. I don't have a problem with that side of it. It is really good. It increased my sales in one week by 40%, 40 percent, 40 or 45 percent, I think it was. So, you know, I can't complain that side of it, but it does lead. It just it leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth personally. But then again, eBay has got to do what they've got to do to grow their business and to make more money. So on that side of it, I can't really have an issue because I'm a business and I'm all about making money. So, yeah, a certain side of it, I have a little bit of an issue with. Another side of it, I totally kind of understand where they're coming from. Um, four is offer multiple um, purchase discounts. So, you know, when someone comes into your store, if you buy like three items or, or, so, or you know, a certain value of items, uh, you'll get like 10% off or something like that. Like over 20 quid, you get 10% off, something like that. Or, you, or as I say, you buy cert a certain amount of items, you get 10% off. I've never really done this much. I mean, I've done it when people have asked me like directly in a message, like, could could you do me a deal on these items or whatever? But I've never actually set up an actual promotion. I believe you can actually do this in eBay as a proper promotion. I've seen it on other stores anyway. Um, I don't, as I say, I've not done that before, so I don't know how well that works, but it might be good um, just having a little look into that. Uh, number five is we're moving away from actual price now. So number five is rephoto or retitle your items. So if sales aren't going well, you can actually retitle, rephotograph the items in your store and see if that helps any. Because it might just help um, attract more people. You know, if you've got better photos, if you've got a longer title, if you're making sure you're using all the characters in the title, opposed to maybe... Uh, previously, you had a poor title and you had a poor photo. It might just help things out a little bit. So, you know, it is a time. It does take a bit of time. It's a time drain. But certainly, you know, I, I would give that one a go. I've done it before. Um, and it, it just makes you feel good as well because you're kind of upping your standard of quality. Even if it doesn't directly impact sales straight away in a positive way, um, it'll just be, make you feel better because you're adding more value to your listings. You're um, creating better listings. And yeah, it does take a little bit more time, but you feel good for doing it. Number six is flip buy it now items over to auction. I don't think many people have really touched on this one in these kind of sorts of videos. Um, but yeah, actually flipping. So I did this recently, actually, with a few video game job lots where you flip the buy it now, obviously there's a button on eBay, you can actually just send it to an online auction. So you send your buy it now item to an online auction and you maybe reprice it or whatever in line with a lower starting price or maybe you just keep it at your buy it now price. And then within seven days, you might get a bid and then that item will sell opposed to it being on buy it now for the, you know, the seven days or whatever or the 30 days and it's still just sitting there. So that might actually help, it helped me but what I would suggest with this is you do a lower starting price and you buy it now price with certain items. Unless they're really, uh, you know, they're really, really desired items, then you could probably charge buy it now price and still get a bid in. Um, but obviously, this uh, kind of method, you're probably going to be taking a little bit less money. So 
You might be taking a bit less money, you might not, depending on the item, but it certainly is a good way to uh, just help increase sales. However, it won't take effect for seven days, obviously, because of, you know, if you've chosen your auction length to be seven days, when you get your bids, you won't actually get the sale for seven days. Uh, number seven is take items off eBay, rebundle and create a new listing. So you've got a job lot of children's books, they're not going, and you've got another job lot of children's books, they're not going. Maybe see if you can do one listing with those items, one bundle, do better photos, do a better title, and see if you can't get that out the door. So, you know, actually taking items off eBay can actually sometimes be good um, for increasing sales because as long as you're taking them off, you're then rebundling them, you're resorting them, you're giving them better photos, you're giving them better titles, like I mentioned before, and then relisting them as a new listing, not necessarily relisting them, um, but, you know, you're actually giving them a new listing. Um, that actually can work, that actually can be better, and uh, obviously it, it gives you sort of some flesh items as well, uh, although they are, but it kind of tricks people because it might, might sort of trick buyers a little bit into thinking that they are new items, but actually they are old items and it freshens up your store a little bit. And obviously you might be able to do better photos and stuff alongside that. Um, so number eight is simply put more items on. You hear this all the time. If your sales are so list, list, list. It works. It sometimes takes a bit of a delay. You know, it takes a little bit of time to take effect. For example, you know, you might be listing 50 items, 100 items one week, and you've really been powering it. But you might not get, you know, the real full effect of the sales for a week or so after that, or a few days after that, or maybe even two weeks after that. So it doesn't always happen straight away, but keep listing and keep putting more things on. So there's not much else I need to say about that. Um, Number nine, increase activity in your store. Best offers, you know, accept best offers, decline best offers, answer messages, uh, do everything you can in your store, um, mark things as dispatched, just a high level of activity in your store to make eBay aware that you're still on there. I mean, I've heard this, again, it's only a theory, but I've heard of people that even just keeping some level of activity up in your store can help you know those sales continue if you've not but been active on ebay in any way for a week or so then ebay might be inclined just like you for example youtube is a great example if a person isn't active on their youtube channel for a certain length of time youtube will actually start um promoting that channel less they won't show videos in the suggested column and stuff like that and therefore with ebay i do feel although this is only a theory it kind of could be uh, accurate in the sense that if you're not active on your eBay store, maybe those listings get pushed down that search a little bit. Maybe it becomes a little bit stagnated. I don't know. Again, this is a theory. But again, people have said that once they've had more activity on the store, opposed to the less activity they may have had in the past, it has generated a few more sales. So keep active on your eBay store. It's only a theory, but you know, why not? You know, it, it costs you a little bit of time just to go on there every day, be active, you know, answer best offers and such, but it might help you out with your sales. So yeah, no harm in at least trying that one. And then finally, number 10 is just add best offer to your listings if you want to, you know, if you want to add best offer to your listings, just take that course of action and then you can maybe accept, you know, you might get an offer for three or four pound less than your asking price on a 20 pound item. And that might be good enough for you. And if you didn't have best offer on, then you might not have got, you know, well, you wouldn't have got that offer or they may not have actually taken the time to message you with that offer asking if it would be all right to accept because they them, uh, themselves as a customer might not, um, they might not be that confident to ask you in a message like that. Or they might just think that you're not inclined to accept best offers. So just maybe add best offer to your listings if you would like to. And that might help trigger a sale. Yes, you might be taking a little bit less money. Again, with a few of these different uh, tips I've been talking about, you will be taking maybe a bit less money. But again, if you want to trigger those sales, it helps a little bit at least. And even adding best offer. And even if you don't want to accept any best offers, just add best offer to your item. And then you'll get offers in. And again, this is only a theory, but a lot of people have said that when they've got um, a good few active offers that they don't accept or dis decline, um, it actually somewhat boosts the item. And whether that's in search results or whatever, 
but it somewhat boosts that item and then the item actually sells a day or two later. And people have had that many, many times. I've, I've, pro I've probably had it myself as well, but I can't think of a specific example, but I do feel like I have had it in the past, that one. So even if you don't want to actually accept any best offers, you know, you could just add it and just leave the offers outstanding. Um, and then that might help generate sales, you know, from that, if this theory is true. So anyway, I'll leave it there, guys, because it's been a bit of a long video, this one. I hope you enjoyed some of the tips that I've uh, talked about in today's video. Um, if you have any more tips that I've missed out, please do uh, comment down below. And then that may, may give someone who's newer watching this, they can maybe go down to the comments and get a few more tips as well. Um, I think I've covered a good range there. A lot of them are centric with uh, revolving around price, you know, lowering your price. However, there are a few in there that don't actually center around price and mean that you don't actually have to lower your price. Um, you know, if you don't want to lower your price, there are ways, of, of course, of actually increasing your sales without doing that. But at the end of the day, sometimes to get those sales, you do have to lower your price somewhat. Or you can try the route of increasing your price and see if that works on some more collectible item so i'll leave it there guys if you did enjoy it make sure to give it a big thumbs up and uh, don't get to go down below there's plenty of links down below including packaging supplies i use um i think my steam it blog is down below and social media as well so i will leave it there guys thank you very much for joining me see you very soon